Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Affirmative. Okay, boys and girls, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this Monday, another Monday. And how many more Mondays do we have left? in america that's what the internet's always asking isn't it well you know something my wife uh, you know what she did the other day even though i don't have a wife i thought i'd just use that uh, term well anyway my wife she signed me up for a bridge club the other day and guess what i'll be jumping off the bridge uh, wednesday <laughs> no the show's going to get serious folks don't worry about it i want to talk about secrets hidden in plain sight today And I'm going to give credit to somebody by the name of Scott Onstott, who created a lot of this information. Well, he compiled it. I don't know if he created it. And I've talked about this stuff for years, you know, Washington, D.C., its roots, why it was put there, the Carroll family, the Jesuits, why the obelisks in Rome, Washington, and London are a sign of the occult and how they all work together. You know, if you go back to my shows, I've been talking about this ad infinitum, and guess what happens? Nobody knows, right? Nobody cares even if we talk about it. You know, I'm going to go to something here real quickly. Critical info, the Jesuit creation of Washington, D.C., how many times have I said that over the years? Hey, I've noticed over the last months, all of my uh, listeners are not uh, keeping the show alive. Yeah, some of the people that usually uh, help the show over the months uh, keep it going have decided either they're broke or it's not important anymore. And I think it's because, you know, I've, I've taken some liberties in the last few weeks or months to, you know, walk on the lighter side of life, so to speak, to uh, not concentrate so much on uh, these subjects that I have for 15 years. I guess what you do in the past doesn't matter anymore, does it? What can you say to me today that'll get you to open up your pocketbook, right, so we can stay on the air? I hate to be blunt, but it's that simple. And the I made a point, if we don't get any more donations, I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, the information that we have here, maybe it's a YouTube culture. You just got to form your own YouTube channel. Forget about radio and all this stuff. Maybe the world is changing right before my very eyes. And I've grown too old, too tired, and too set in my ways. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? This same show. Years ago, used to generate a lot of interest, income. And I don't mean, you know, I'm going to go and buy myself, you know, a million-dollar mansion. But it also, it did pay the light bills. It did pay my rent. It paid for my dog's food. But it's getting to the point none of it does that anymore. And so what do you do? Well, if you notice the last couple weeks, I've done a few less shows because I've had to do some legal work to support myself. So go to my website, LegalEagleDocumentService.com. Little you do know, I have a law degree. I do do a little contract work for attorneys in the States, uh, those that open up their pocketbook a little bit. And uh, guess what? You don't make much money. So I decided I'm going to study for the bar again, which I started uh, today. I did a contracts outline, and there's. Uh, I'm going to take it in uh, July of 2018. Then I'm going to sue every one of you who've listened to my show for these years for nothing. And, uh, you know, I bet you I can find at least one rich son of a bitch out there that's so tight that couldn't, I can't even put a few hundred dollars together. But he gets a lot of information, right? Right, yeah. I bet you I could find somebody. So, somebody said, well, why don't you charge? You know, if I charge, people would, they'd go to some other uh, 
rinky dink website and find something and find something free what happens is if you really have a question about yourself ask yourself this are you worth anything in life and how do you determine what you're worth you determine what you're worth by saying hey I'm not afraid to get paid for what I do what I do is valuable what I do is important what I do deserves to be paid for that's the way I feel about it and if I don't get any more donations in the next few weeks forget about it Charlie just go listen to somebody else because I'm tired of feeling guilty about something that is important as this that I've done for 15 years and uh, you know maybe you just ought to get used to listening to somebody else so what I'm gonna do is bring back what I did for 15 years talking about this thing these few things I'm gonna hear here I can remember saying it maybe a hundred million times but maybe you want to hear it from somebody else and uh, maybe you think they're worth something but anyway here we go. I'm going to play this. This guy is a thing called the Plain Truth. He likes to, you know, he uh, understands a little about the Jesuits. And he played something called Secrets Hidden in Plain Sight. A guy named Scott Anstutt did some information on that. So anyway, YouTube culture, here you go. Makes my job easy. And maybe you want to listen to somebody else anyway. Or maybe you can go to gregantonysjournal.wordpress.com and put a few bucks in there so, you know, the show's worth doing. Now, is that a Christian thing to say? Hell, every time you hear these Christian ministries, all they're asking for is money. Please donate to my Christian ministry. Please donate to this. Please donate to that. You know? I don't feel bad by saying, hey, this information's valuable. I've been doing it a long time. If you think it's valuable, put a few bucks in there. Here you go. Hey folks, and welcome to another video from a plain truth.info and questioning everything to find truth. We're going to dig into more about Washington, the District of Columbia. Can anyone tell me what the District of Columbia means? Can anybody tell me what date Washington, D.C. was founded in the federal government with the President, with the Congress, and with the Supreme Court, Supreme Law of the Land? What date was that founded? No one is taught that, and no one knows. Just like we're going to learn a lot more about Washington, D.C. and its layout from the excellent work of Scott Onstad uh, and Secrets Hidden in Plain Sight here in a little bit. But I want to get over the seven hills, just like the seven hills in Rome and why we're under still Roman Latin law and why the Jesuits and the Knights Templar and the Vatican and the City of London and Washington, D.C. have been ruling us for a very, very long time. And what you think is a country is not a country. We are not America. America is what? South America, Central America, North America? What America are we referring to? This is how they keep the Mandela effect and keep us confused. But back to the Seven Hills. This is from Gnostic Warrior. During the final persecution of the Holy Roman Church, Peter the Roman will rule, feeding the flock through many tribulations, at the end of which the city of Seven Hills will be destroyed and the formidable judge will judge his people. It is well known that the city of Rome was built on seven hills or mountains, but did you know that Washington, D.C. was also built on seven hills? Yes, it does. Capitol Hill, Meridian Hill, Floral Hills, Forest Hills, Hillbrook, Hillcrest, and Knox Hill. In biblical prophecy, at the end of which the city of seven hills will be destroyed, will this be Rome, Washington, or some other city? Now, I want you to pay particular attention with Scott Onstott's work when he talks about ISIS in Washington, D.C. being laid out in the form of ISIS. The meaning of Wessing of uh, Washington is derived from the Anglo-Saxon word soaking or steeping to wash. Wasser meaning water. Today water and wash is the standard meaning in English. This is where we get wash in Washington. What? The Potomac River, which is the main body of water, oh, which okay. used to be called the Tiber River back when Rome, Maryland became Washington, D.C. The Anacostia River, the Ohio Canal, and also Rock Creek flow into the Potomac. So we've established that wash means water. Now let's explore the word tun. Tun comes from the Anglo-Saxon word tor, meaning a prominent hill. Holy hill was sacred to Venus and had special significance to the Druids who were descendants of the Phoenician lands. Also pay attention to Scott Onstott's work when he talks about Virgo and the Virgin. One of the original five mounds of London bore the name of Penton, which also meant the Holy Hill. 
So is it a core? Is it a correlation or just coincidence that the Pentagon looks almost exactly like Stonehenge? Hmm. When we combine the two, Tun and Holy Hill, we then have Holy Hill surrounded by water. So the question becomes: Are we going to be taken over? Uh, will the uh, could it be that the Vatican and Rome will be taken down, or will it be the new Atlantis? We know today it's the United States of America with its capital on a hill. Will it become the sacrificial goat? Let's get into it. Well, go ahead. Oh, there's a few things here is they're putting on the screen. But yeah, the United States is going to be controlled by Rome. Well, what are people going to do about it? I really think nothing. And they will get their way, won't they? And what happened to our buddy here? I think he's uh, gone astray. Oh, he's got little symbols here. Showing the little symbol of District of Columbia, etc., etc., and uh, the Jesuit creation of Washington, D.C. And uh, little did I know, he was going to force me into talking here. We're looking at the third eye of the dollar bill, old news. We've talked about that a million times. Nothing will ever get done. Uh, we're also looking about the symbol uh, on the hundred dollar bill. Uh, of the Twin Towers going down. Towers, <laughs> ISIS is crisis. Okay, now we're going to that. Boy, I didn't realize I'd have to work today and actually talk. The moon, ISIS. Okay. Oh boy, I'm telling you. And he's looking at pictures of ISIS. The goddess Isis Moon, the magnetic attraction principle. Okay, he's finally back. Thank God. I know people don't want to listen to me anymore. So anyway, here we go. The Scott Onstott's fine work, Secrets Hidden in Plain Sight. Please watch this. It's excellent. Excellent. The Washington Monument is an obvious phallic symbol. The Vesica Pisces paths surrounding the obelisk suggest female genitals. Taken together, the symbols represent the joining of Osiris and Isis, and the conception of the sun god Horus. Now maybe you think I'm going too far at this point, but take a look at what is above the elevator that goes up the shaft of the Washington Monument, the same ride Robert Langdon took at the end of the lost symbol. Right? Okay, this is good stuff. Uh, you got to give credit where credit is due. There's some really interesting things that we're learning today. Do you really think you can learn anything more in your life? Or do you reach a certain age and your brain just shuts off? Maybe in America that age is like uh, 16. Right above the elevator doors, there is a bronze sculpture of George Washington, sculpted by French Freemason Houdon. And above that is the winged disc of Horus. What in the world does this Egyptian solar symbol have to do with America? It's a clue to the secret meaning of the obelisk in the most public of places. But how many actually see it and understand? The dimensions of the monument are all six. Wait, I do. I understand. Do I get a gold star for understanding? Who cares? You can understand everything, and it's going to end up the same way, right? There were people in uh, Warsaw, Poland, right? Let me give you an example. People in Warsaw, Poland who were Jewish, many didn't understand, and they went to a concentration camp and got killed. There were others in Warsaw, Poland, who understood who Hitler was, and they got killed too. So, we have people in America who understand that the obelisk is a symbol of Roman dominance and they're going to kill everybody here. And then there's people that don't understand it. But guess what? We're all going to get killed. So is it better to understand it or not understand it and live happily until they kill you? I don't know. You answer that. It's a good question, isn't it? Didn't realize you'd 
Get some really smart stuff here on this show today, right? Sixes and fives. What an amazing coincidence that 6,660 inches equals 555 feet. We'll decipher the meaning of sixes and fives in Egypt. Mm. The Washington Monument is not a true obelisk cut from a single piece of stone. Instead, it is both literally and figuratively a monumental work of masonry. Bernard I. Peach's meticulous metrological study of the Washington Monument reveals a sacred diagram projected on the earth. Based on the exact height and angle of the pyramidion, its face and ridge lines project down to the ground and trace circles that are proportioned ad quadratum with respect to each other. The diagram shown here is called the octogram star in mathematics. It's a symbol used in many religions and cultures around the world. I'll briefly trace the octogram star through history to uncover its meaning. The earliest example I've found that has this symmetry is the star of Inanna, the Sumerian goddess whom I think all the Isis obsession is ultimately based on. Archaeologists identify the Sumerian culture as the oldest civilization on Earth. Sumeria predated ancient Egypt but it wasn't even discovered until 1890, so that must be why most esoteric references are to Isis rather than Inanna. I highly recommend reading the collective works of Zechariah Sitchin for an alternative, albeit controversial theory, on the origins of civilization. But that's another documentary entirely. I have found the Octogram Star in many other places around the world. You know, i got to ask myself something. How about if I ask you guys, too? Where do all these smart people come from? I mean, where do they get time to read all these books? I mean, I, don't have, I feel like the day goes by so fast that I can't even uh, read a street sign, and then by the time I read it, the day's over. I don't know where they come from. Maybe they're coming from a different planet, aliens from a different planet. Who knows? The Hindu star of Lakshmi is a pure octogram star. The Egyptian Ogdoad adds a central cosmic egg to the mix, containing the sun god Ra. The structure of the Celtic calendar resonates with the octogram star. The Gnostic theologian Valentius transformed Egyptian concepts into Christian ones in his second century cosmology featuring the Pleroma, or Godhead, in the center. The Buddhist Wheel of Dharma has this as its symbol, incorporating the Eightfold Path. Islam uses the Rub el hizb as its symbol. Found in the oldest Qurans as a chapter marker, here it is expressed fractally in Muhammad's tomb in Medina. The Eastern Orthodox Church used octogram star symmetry in numerous depictions of Christ Pantocrator and in the Transfiguration. Even the seemingly unrelated Aztec culture produced their calendrical Piedra del Sol having this remarkable symmetry. Finally, the Vatican also encoded this powerful symbol in St. Peter's Square. The ancient Egyptian obelisk at its center is literally a gigantic sundial with stones in the pavement marking the seasons. So the octogram star is resoundingly a solar symbol, appropriately fitting the male obelisk, which is the primary reading of the Washington Monument. However, female energy is not entirely neglected in the Washington Monument. We've already seen how a stretched vesica Pisces symbol surrounds the obelisk. Rick Campbell has brought something even more hidden to light If you draw a vesica Pisces to scale, with the circle's diameters equal to the height of the Washington Monument's 555 feet, the Great Pyramid of Egypt fits perfectly inside the vulva. This is no accident. The architect who designed the Washington Monument must have wanted to secretly link it with the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid and the Washington Monument both have phi in their proportions which is one of the most interesting numbers in mathematics. Okay. Reading the lost symbol, I was intrigued with Washington, D.C. It's a city overflowing with esoteric symbolism.
Zooming in from space as we can in Google Earth, let me point out a few landmarks. Here's the White House, Capitol Building, Washington Monument, Jefferson Memorial, Lincoln Memorial, and the Pentagon just across the Potomac. Rick Campbell has uncovered much of the underlying geometry of the city on his informative site dcsymbols.com. He sees the following diagram in the streets and interconnection of monuments. The geometry consists of a pentagram over a cube, all contained within an overarching pyramid. Each one of these shapes carries a meaning we'll be exploring. We'll see later in Egypt how the pentagram symbolizes the microcosm, which is everything in the universe, human scale or smaller. The cube is a recurrent esoteric symbol for the body that we'll be running into all over the world. I found a pair of three, four, five triangles between the cube and the pyramid. Turning off the cube layer, you see the rectangle surrounding the White House is also made up of a pair of interlocking triangles, this time with 5, 12, 13 proportions. 3, 4, 5 and 5, 12, 13 are the first two Pythagorean triplets. As you'll begin to appreciate, Pythagorean knowledge figures prominently in decoding this mystery. Where have we seen an unfinished pyramid before? On the back of the dollar bill, of course. If we illuminate the DC Pyramid with the same all-seeing eye of providence, we are directed to a specific building. Is this the eye of providence we are looking at, or its older incarnation as the eye of Horus? Either way, what is behind the all-seeing eye of the sun? It's the headquarters of Scottish Freemasonry, which goes by many names, including the Supreme Council, Mother Council of the World, and House of the Temple. This building is loaded with Egyptian symbolism, with a 13-step unfinished pyramid on top, just like on the dollar bill, and two giant sphinxes flank the entrance out front. The architect John Russell Pope modeled the 1911 building after the mausoleum of Halicarnassus, now a part of Turkey. As one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, it served as tomb of King Mausolus, which is where we get the word mausoleum. The house of the temple correspondingly serves as tomb of Albert Pike, sovereign grand commander, confederate general, and the most famous Freemason of his times. Pike wrote Morals and Dogma, the handbook formerly given to new members up until 1974, which details the 33 ranks of Freemasonry. Okay, folks. Got a question. How many of you even give a damn about Morals and Dogma, that book? Well, probably nobody, or a few people. How, how, many, how many pages have you read of it? I've read a lot of it. And the reason I read it was back in the days when I still could read before the internet came. Now I can't read anything. I think my brain has been fried because I've been using my cell phone too much. But you know, if you read that a little bit, you got to understand your enemy. Don't be afraid of your enemy. You know, get your nose out of the things you like to read and read the things you need to read. And as Mark Twain once said, many of you would be better off being illiterate. Because, you know what, just think how many bad books you wouldn't have to read. And I'm so tired of people reading bad books, watching bad movies, talking, you know, about bad conversations. When in the world are you smart people in America ever going to wake up to this crap? You know, you're never going to. You're going to end up just like every other civilization. And you know how that turns out. Back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The Book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, 
and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off limits by the supreme, by the supreme Jesuit, Jesuit command. command. But stay on the people. People, people. Listen, listen up, up, and you, and may, you may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, back on the investigative journal. Let's get this over with. You know, time is money. Money is time. And uh, I'd like you to... Go to LegalEagleDocumentService.com. That's LegalEagleDocumentService.com, the company that sponsors this show. And why should you go there? Well, you know something? If you ever tried to get a legal document done by one of these high-priced bar attorneys that spend most of their time in the bar anyway, you're going to find that you're going to spend thousands of dollars on documents that can be done quite cheaply. You could do them yourself for almost nothing, but most of you don't have the time, don't have the little bit of legal knowledge you need, like, okay, how do I write a will? Pretty simple. Put it on a formatted piece of paper, and that gets a lot of people confused. And then, do you don't, many people have told me, well, is a will legal if I write it on a napkin? Of course it is. Is the contract legal if I just say, hey, Bill, I'm going to pay you $1,000 and you have to fix my house. And Bill doesn't fix your house and you pay him $1,000. Is that a contract? Of course. It's an oral contract. Your word is your bond. You can take him to court. But hell, everybody lies in court, so you better get it written down. So write your will down. It's not hard. It's not a legal document. It's yours. But I can help you do it because Legal Eagle Document Service has told me if you contact me, I'll get you to them, and they're one of the best document services in the country. Bar none. You can go to LegalZoom. You know who owns that? That rich lawyer from L.A. who did the O.J. Simpson case. He's making millions of dollars because, you know, if you go to LegalZoom's website, you know how much that website cost? Probably $500,000 just to create it. And, you know, people are going to go there and think you're getting a good deal. You're getting a bad deal. 
you're never going to talk to anybody, and they entice you into making a phone call to get legal consultation. That's how they make their money. That's it. That's exactly how you do it. So go to Legal Legal Document Service for all your legal needs. You're going to talk to a person. You're going to get your legal document done for pennies on the dollar with people that know how to do it. You, you don't have to be a lawyer to do this stuff. That's the real key. Did you know that uh, Abraham Lincoln never went to law school? And he was probably one of our best lawyers. So you can be your own best lawyer too. Go to Legal Legal Document Service, sponsoring the investigative journal. Yes. All right, let me uh, get back to the Jesuit creation of Washington, D.C. And if you haven't understood this, then you know what? Don't ever come to my show again because I've said it a million times for 15 years. So, and I always get these people that go, well, how come the Jesuits are so nice? They give us so much money. You know why? Because they steal it all. <laughs> all right. Don't get me started or we won't even play uh, the really important stuff here. Yeah, but what about, what about this, folks? This guy gives a lot of great information, but I have a hard time with it all. You know, there's like the Pythagorean theorems and all of this stuff. Let's boil it down to real simplicity. This is an occult who believes in Lucifer worship, and they're going to screw you over just like the Egyptian pharaohs screwed over the peoples that built the pyramids. They just do it a little more sophisticated now. That's what's going to happen. That's who rules your country. And guess what? Rome is right in there with this creation of fascism. Don't worry about it. You believe a word that comes out of um, that pope's mouth and you know something? I don't have any s sympathy for you. You know? I really don't. I, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Don't listen to my show because, you know, you've displayed a an ability to think you know it all, but not never really understanding the one key factor, and that is you must understand you're nothing but a slave in this country. They are owners. They will take advantage of you, and they will kill you. It's that simple. The House of the Temple is where the climax in the lost symbol takes place. Campbell shows how the elevation was designed ad quadratum, which is Latin for by the square. Ad quadratum is a sacred design template we'll see employed in the District of Columbia itself and at Chartres Cathedral. The sunburst above the entry is at the center of the square, and the top corner marks the symbolic apex of the unfinished pyramid. The bottom corner presumably marks the crypt where Pike is interred. Scottish Freemasons are really into the number 33. There are 33 columns in the house of the temple that are 33 feet high. This is the place where a hard-working initiate can attain the highest 33rd degree from the 33 members of the Supreme Council. 33rd degree Masons are often found in positions of power Many presidents of the United States were Freemasons. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has a permanent exhibit featuring the portrait and signature of each of these presidents with a record of their Masonic careers. It is difficult to verify Masonic membership because some members do not make their involvement a matter of public record. However, each lodge keeps its own records. I find it interesting that George Washington, Harding, Eisenhower, Carter, and the younger Bush all chose to be sworn into the office of the president with a hand on this Masonic Bible dating from 1770. One has to be male and believe in a supreme being to seek membership as a Scottish Freemason. They insist their fraternity is not a religion, although atheists are ineligible for membership. Freemasonry is not a secret society, but members are strongly admonished, under pain of death, not to reveal core secrets. Much of what happens inside the House of the Temple has been pieced together by outside researchers in recent years, and this has been brought forward in Dan Brown's book, The Lost Symbol. Members can rise to the 32nd degree through hard work and study, but only those selected by the Supreme Council 
he attained the highest 33rd degree. Richard Hoagland and Mike Barra have... Here is Cape Canaveral at Kennedy Space Center. These are the two launch pads where all the Apollo and Space Shuttle missions left Earth. Here is the single runway, runway 33. Of all the vectors they could have chosen for the strip. <laughs> Don't you find that interesting? Wow. Don't you find that interesting? Runway 33. Why did NASA choose 33 degrees west of north? If that seems like circumstantial evidence to you, how about this? Here is astronaut Buzz Aldrin, 33rd degree Mason, on the moon holding the flag of the Supreme Council, which he later brought back to Earth and gave to the Supreme Commander of the House of the Temple. Well, let's uh, think, think about this. He never went to the moon, but he did have the flag, and he did it in some kind of studio to make people think he went to the moon, just to straighten that out. These examples show that the Freemasons and NASA are obsessed with this number. I'm wondering what's so special about 33? Where else does this number appear? Jesus is said to have performed 33 miracles and to have died at age 33. Perhaps this is no coincidence. The Bible says King David, father of the famous Solomon who built the first temple in Jerusalem, reigned for 33 years. I've got some better information. My mother died when she was 33 and I was born on 9-11. I should be a 33 degree Mason, right? In the Kabbalah, or Jewish mysticism, there are ten sephiro in the Tree of Life plus another hidden one called Doth. Adding the 22 paths between Sephiro brings the total up to the magic 33. My theory involves the Schumann resonance. This is the frequency at which the Earth vibrates. Scientists have measured the standing wave at 7.83 Hertz, with a wavelength equal to the circumference of the Earth. This inaudible low hum is due to lightning discharges in our conductive ionosphere, causing the planet to actually ring like a bell. If you do the simple calculation, which I've done here in a spreadsheet, you'll see that middle C is 33 harmonics, or 32 overtones above the Schumann resonance. Sound implausible? Think of it this way. Our bodies resonate 33 octaves above the Earth's fundamental vibration. This fits with the ancient hermetic motto, as above, so below. I find it incredible that the UN emblem divides the Earth into 33 sectors. This has to be more than coincidental. The human spinal column appropriately has 33 vertebrae if you count the fused bones in the lower spine individually. 33 might very well be built into the architecture of the universe. For further confirmation, let's take a look at the Great Seal of the United States of America, as shown on the back of a $1 bill. Let's start with the obverse side of the Great Seal. That's the side with the eagle. Most important to our current line of inquiry, let's count the number of feathers on the wings. The left wing has 33 feathers, and the right wing has 32. Could these refer to the 33 harmonics or 32 overtones just discussed in relation to the Schumann resonance? I think Rick Campbell has correctly decoded the controlling geometry. Three circles with their centers on each other's circumferences form a kind of double vesica Pisces, if you will. A vesica Pisces is formed whenever two equally sized circles come together such that their centers are on each other's circumferences. A star of David emerges from the three circles' intersection points. Examining the reverse of the Great Seal, we find the same controlling geometry. and Novus Ordo Seclorum. Never mind right now what these models You know, I was thinking uh, the same thing when those dogs started barking. Anytime I hear the word geometry, it drives me crazy.
I remember when I was in high school, I did terribly in geometry, and I used to have to cheat to even try to get a passing grade. Tell me about it. I was thinking about playing baseball on the baseball team, and they're talking about the Pythagorean theorems. Give me a break. That's why it's great that I call on these people to help us out here. The letters at the points of the Star of David are A, S, N, O, and M. Rearranging, we get Mason. So to summarize, we've seen how the House of the Temple presides over a street pyramid in Washington, D.C. There is a clear Masonic connection to the Office of the President, NASA, and the United Nations. The Scottish Freemasons are obsessed with the number 33, which is echoed in the Judeo-Christian tradition, having a resonance both with the human body and the earth. It's no secret that Masons trace their history back through the Knights Templar. I was amazed to discover there is an urban village straight across the Potomac from the White House called Rosslyn. Many researchers believe one of the Templar factions fled to Scotland after the infamous raid that destroyed their order. Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland was the place featured in the Da Vinci Code, where Sophie learned she was a direct descendant of Jesus and where she was reunited with her bloodline. Friday the 13th, October 1307, was the date most of the Templars got arrested, had their considerable assets seized, were interrogated and tortured to death by agents of the French king, acting in cooperation with the Pope. Knowing the connections between the Templars, Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland, and the Scottish Freemasons, made me take a closer look at Rosslyn, Virginia. Rosslyn has two important features, a dense urban village and the Marine Corps War Memorial. So I drew a line from the center of the Marine Corps Memorial in Rosslyn, Virginia, to the center of Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland. You've got to love Google Earth. The Great Circle Path passes precisely over the apex of the Eye of Providence, and the entire DC Street Pyramid, arguably confirming my line of reasoning. Before we leave Scotland entirely, let many researchers have identified Masonic compasses built into the street plan. The compasses that run along Pennsylvania and Maryland Avenues point to the White House and the Jefferson Memorial. The spread of the compasses is one royal mile. I might chalk this up to coincidence if it wasn't for the diagram Richard Heath has published in Sacred Number. Heath's diagram is drawn as a grid of equilateral triangles, so every edge measures one royal mile. The Jefferson Memorial, White House, and House of the Temple are centrally located on these nodes. The point of the Pentagon facing the White House is at this node. This is simply too much coincidence to have not been the product of intentional design. I find the ancient Flower of Life diagram fits perfectly into this grid. The Flower of Life has been found all over the world. Wikipedia lists the Flower of Life in 15 countries so far. Here's the Flower of Life at the Osirion Temple in Abydos, Egypt, which is a minimum of 3,300 years old. It's a little-known fact that Leonardo da Vinci even studied the Flower of Life. This is the second depiction of a cube we've seen in DC. Metrology, the science of measurement, is one of the keys to deciphering secret architecture. Each side of the larger cube spans two triangles, forming an edge length equal to two royal miles. The polar radius of the Earth is 1728 for 1728 links DC with the mythical New Jerusalem described in the Bible and the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlongs the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal the 
dimensions of New Jerusalem describe a cube whose volume is 1728 billion furlongs. Did you ever wonder why the U.S. and Israel have such a strong bond? D.C. is the New Jerusalem. Here's the 1992 Israeli Supreme Court building in Jerusalem. Does this pyramid on top containing a window look familiar? It appears to be the Eye of Providence, the same symbol found in the streets of D.C. and on the dollar bill. Many researchers have seen the Tree of Life from Jewish mysticism encoded in D.C.'s traffic circles and monuments. However, DCSymbols.com is the only place that shows how the streets and traffic circles match this early depiction of the Porte Lucis Tree of Life from 1516. The Portal of Light version is shaped like an actual tree. Maybe that's where the Tree of Life got its name. Scott Circle's gently curving streets mimic the shape of the Pythagorean Y. In the secret architecture of our nation's capital, author David Ovison says, The Pythagorean Y is a vestigial drawing of a path through life in which one is perpetually presented with a choice of symbolic directions. Should one do good or bad? Scott Circle is in the position in the Tree of Life known as Doth, the hidden Sephiro. According to the Kabbalah, the reason Doth is depicted as hidden is because humans who remain selfish cannot see it. Only those who orient themselves in the service of others are able to see the light of Doth, in which all ten Sephiro are united as one. I think Scott Circle exemplifies the secret architecture of DC. It's plain to see once you have the knowledge, but remains hidden to the general public. Most people who know the Tree of Life are more familiar with the Athanasius Kircher version of 1652, which is arranged in three columns. The Kircher version is seen here in John Evelyn's plan to rebuild London after the Great Fire of 1666. Both he and Christopher Wren submitted plans based on the Tree of Life, although Wren's wasn't as in-your-face as Evelyn's. Neither were actually carried out but it shows you this kind of esoteric symbolism wasn't anything new when DC was laid out a century after the Great Fire of London. As you've seen, there is a deep connection to Judaism, both in the Tree of Life and in the metrology of Richard Heath's larger cube that links Washington, DC with the mythical New Jerusalem in the Bible. To understand why both the Flower of Life and Tree of Life are in D.C., you need a one-minute visual education in sacred geometry. The Flower of Life grows on the Tree of Life. Flower of Life geometry is based on the 2D reality that six circles fit perfectly around a central seventh, shown here with quarters. Flowers eventually bear fruit and with a growth of circles, we have the traditional Fruit of Life diagram containing 13 circles. Connecting the dots reveals Metatron's cube, an important diagram in the study of sacred geometry. It was named after the biblical figure Enoch, who was transformed into the archangel Metatron. Metatron's cube contains the five platonic solids, both in smaller, in larger scales, like a fractal. Platonic solids figure prominently in Plato's philosophy, after whom they were named. The dots and the interstices encode the pattern of two intersecting Pythagorean tetractuses. This is the pattern on the dollar bill, in what is called glory above the eagle's head. Pythagoreans swore an oath to the tetractus, which was the most important symbol in their secret worship of number. All of this symbolism is interconnected in a system. Masons study for years to understand these things and advance through their degrees. Freemasonry is a remnant of an ancient mystery school. Look at how many lucky 13s are on the obverse of the Great Seal. We've already seen the 13 stars of glory over the eagle's head. In the eagle's claws there are 13 arrows, 13 leaves on the branches hold 13 olives, and there are 13 stripes on the shield. 
Perhaps having 13 colonies was no accident. Curiously, the eagle only has nine tail feathers. Everything has a meaning in symbolism. The 13th degree of Scottish Freemasonry is called the Royal Arch of Solomon. It's about Enoch, descent into a vault, the arch, a triangle of gold, a cube of agate, and the name of God. Enoch supposedly excavated nine chambers, think of the tail feathers, underneath the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, one below the other, each with a supporting arch. In the final chamber he placed a cube of agate, inset with a triangle of gold engraved with the holy name of God. By this sacred geometry, Rick Campbell has shown Enoch's cube is in fact Metatron's cube, the triangle within the cube. The name of God shown in Hebrew is called the Tetragrammaton, the most sacred four-letter word in Judaism. The letters of the Tetragrammaton are traditionally shown in the Pythagorean Tetractus because it encodes the Shemham Porash, or names of God, which in Jewish mystical tradition corresponds to 72 arrangements of the four holy letters. Wow. Now, we're only, uh, we only have like 30 seconds. That's a mouthful. I'm going to have to watch this like 5,000 times to ever figure it out, the last parts of this. But anyway, I hope you got a little bit out of it. The idea is pretty simple to me. The Vatican led New World Order rules. Back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The Book of Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The prophecy... Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver, Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free... 1-800-375-4188.